Buongiorno, I'm Dennis Neal, and for the next half hour, I'm going to take you on a trip through Italy. You'll see the cities of Florence and Rome, among others, and a city in Germany with a little Roman history in its past, Trier. But the first stop on our trip is right here in Venice. Right now, we're traveling on one of Venice's 150 canals. The city itself is built on 117 islands and is connected by 400 bridges. And that is perhaps where the mystique of Venice lies. Because of the fact that the city is made up of islands, transportation is by foot or boat. The closest that you can drive your car is the Piazza Roma, and it is there where you must park your car and continue on without it. Your best bet if you have luggage is a taxi or the Vaporetto. Since the taxi is a little more expensive, the Vaporetto is what I recommend. A one-way trip from the Piazza Roma to the Piazza San Marcos will only cost you 1,200 lira, which is less than a dollar. Suitcases larger than carry-on size do require an extra fee, though. If you decide on a taxi, though fares are usually fixed according to distance, do establish the fare beforehand. The same is true of the gondola. No trip to Venice would be complete without at least one ride on that world-famous boat. But at a cost of 40 to 60,000 lira, which is $30 or more, it can be expensive. But most times, for that same fee, you can have up to six persons sharing the ride. Again, establish the fare before taking the ride. It could save you money and an argument with an irate gondolier. You don't need boats to get around Venice, though. With a map, you can walk across the entire city in only 15 minutes. But don't get upset if you get lost a few times. Everybody does. Venetians are happy to help, so feel free to ask. The only piazza or square in Venice is the San Marcos, and it is perhaps the most famous piazza in the world. Its covered galleries shelter famous cafes and luxury shops where tourists and Venetians alike gather to shop and relax. Year-round, weather permitting, you'll find outside tables at the piazza, or you can sit at the tables on the inside of these elegant cafes. And while you sip your espresso, cappuccino, or any number of other Italian specialties, you even have an orchestra to entertain you. One interesting note, though Venice boasts many fine cafes, perhaps the oldest and most famous is the Florian. With the original opening date of December 29th in the year 1720, it is the oldest coffee house in Europe. It is said that the Piazza San Marcos was the center of city life, and Florian's is where it would all begin. Venice is also known for its shopping, and it can be a lot of fun, but it can also be very demanding. Don't be in a hurry because no one else is and you'll only become frustrated. You might also miss that bargain that you were looking for. The two most famous areas to shop are of course the Piazza San Marcos and the Rialto Bridge. The Rialto is the first bridge to be built across Venice's Grand Canal, sort of like Main Street in most towns. Today there are only two others that span the canal, the bridge at the Ferrovia train station and the one at the Gallery dell'Accademia. The Rialto was first built in the 12th century and was known as the Quartarolo after the coin used for the toll. It was made of wood and was a drawbridge to allow the passage of boats along the Grand Canal. Frequent restorations and embellishments were made until one year it collapsed under the weight of a crowd gathered to view a holiday procession along the canal. In the 16th century it was rebuilt of stone with a large enough arch to allow an armed galley to pass under it. Today it is in the center of the business quarter, lined with shops along its length, and has become one of the symbols of the city's official beauty. Though shopping on the bridge and in the piazza is more well known, you can find beautiful shops throughout Venice filled with the products of Italy's renowned fashion creators and Murano glass. In Murano, glass products are still made using a 2,000-year-old process which calls for using a meter-long pipe and other tools for shaping the hot material. It takes over 15 years to master the craft. Most of the glass factories in Murano and Venice offer tours that include watching a master craftsman at work. The kilns are fired up to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit to melt the glass. Long steel rods are used to extract the melted glass, which is quickly worked into shape. Blowing into the pipe, the glass is further molded into shape by the craftsman.
After reheating the glass, the craftsman adds the finishing touches. After the demonstration, you are escorted into the showroom to look over the factory's products, which run the gamut of anyone's imagination, from chandeliers to dishes to art. Most glass factories also offer mail service to anywhere in the world. But you don't have to go to the factories to buy glass objects. There are shops throughout Venice that specialize in it, including, of course, in the Piazza San Marcos. But the shops and cafes aren't the only attraction to the piazza. One is the clock tower, which dates back to the 15th century. On its summit are a pair of giant bronze jacks which have been striking the hour for the past 500 years. On the opposite side of the square is the Campanile, or bell tower. It dates back to the 10th century, but in 1902 collapsed and had to be rebuilt. For a small fee, you can ride to the top in a lift for a beautiful panoramic view of Venice. From this vantage point, it's easy to see the relationship between Venice and the sea. Also located in the square is the Dogus Palace. The palace was a symbol of Venetian power and glory and was the seat of the government. Built in the 12th century, it was completely transformed in the 14th, 15th and 16th centuries. The ground floor gallery is supported by 36 columns and the open upper gallery by 71. On the rear of the palace connecting it with the prison across the canal is the Bridge of Sighs. It dates back to the 17th century. It is said that it owes its name to the prisoners who would be crossing over from the palace into the prison. They would take one last look at the beautiful waterfront and their lost freedom, sigh, and then continue on to their fate within the prison walls. One of the more famous